we lived in a world without any wires. Most of us have had a fight or two with Christmas lights that were tangled. <laughs> and many of us have this fight every year. How great would it be to have individual lights that you could hang on the tree or anywhere else, just like all the other decorations, without having any tether between them just for power? But Christmas lights are just one annoying example of the limitation of wired power. We can look around our homes and offices for any number of other examples. If you think of your desk or maybe your boardroom table at work where you find a collection of surge protectors, power bars, cables, adapters, one for each of your laptops, smartphones, tablets, projectors, and speaker phones. And once you get it all set up, it's harmless. But what happens when you have a guest who needs to plug in or you want to rearrange things or take something with you? It's a tangled mess. But we've been here before. It wasn't so long ago that this problem was compounded with cables for data and for voice. And thankfully, we've conquered those. But the power cable remains our final frontier in the quest to become truly wireless. But how do we get there? How do we fulfill this quest? This was me about 10 years ago, working for a software company, making products for mobile devices. I spent a lot of time in airports, sipping coffee on my way to visit customers with several mobile devices in tow, each with its own set of cables. And these annoying cables would inevitably get tangled together like Christmas lights. Wireless data was well on its way, though it hadn't made it into all the devices that I was carrying but nobody was working on eliminating the power cable. So this thought sparked my curiosity, and I started digging. But we'll come back to what I was doing in a moment. First, we'll talk about this guy. If we look back at the invention of electricity, it doesn't take us very long to come across the story of Nikola Tesla. He's the inventor of AC electricity, the same technology that we use in all of our electrical outlets in our homes and offices the same technology that we use to charge our smartphone batteries. And with all the technological advancements that we've made that enable us to make these devices, we still rely on power technology that was invented around the year 1900. Tesla was also the first guy to start talking about wireless power in a very big way. While he was developing wired power for the world, he was also developing wireless power. And he had a grand vision for a world wireless system that would deliver wireless power to everyone, everywhere, at no cost. Tesla wanted to give you free power. This was the first phase of Tesla's dream, though it was never actually completed. He ran out of money, lost his investors, and was never able to complete the work. And today, many believe that the system never would have worked anyway. Did Tesla know something that the rest of us don't? Maybe we'll never know that. No one has ever realized Tesla's dream. Though some of us are taking steps in that direction. In fact, there are a number of people here who use wireless power every day. If you have a toothbrush that looks like this, then wireless power is already in your home. Electric toothbrushes started to become popular in the 1990s. They have a rechargeable battery in the handle, and they charge wirelessly when you put them back in the stand. And they use a technology called magnetic induction. Magnetic induction works by using two coils that have to face each other and be more or less in alignment with each other. And in the case of your toothbrush, it's designed in such a way that you can only put your toothbrush back in its stand in one way. And that's with these coils aligned one in the toothbrush handle, and one in the stand. Since these toothbrushes were first introduced, and as our society has become increasingly more mobile, we've created a growing demand for the availability of power while on the go. We can now buy smartphones that have wireless power technology built into them. And we can buy cars that have wireless charging hotspots built into the console. So we can charge our phones wirelessly in our car just by placing it on a charging mat in the console 
as we drive to our destination. And if that destination is Starbucks, well, we can use a free wireless charging hotspot that's available in select Starbucks locations now. And if your phone doesn't support this, well, you can buy or borrow one of these rings to connect to your phone to enable wireless charging. So imagine walking into a Starbucks and you order a coffee before you walk over to the table and you lay your device down on a wireless charging hotspot. And when you do that, your phone lights up and it starts charging wirelessly. And it's pretty cool to see this for the first time. It's like a little bit of science fiction coming to life. <laughs> so we get a message. <laughs> we get a message and we go to check our phone instinctively and we tilt it toward us and we look at the screen and as we do that, the charging stops. So we can't use our phone and have it charge wirelessly at the same time. We have to leave it sitting on that coaster-sized wireless charger. But now the barista is calling out our name, our coffee is ready, so we go and we grab our coffee and our pastry and we bring that over to our table. And we lay that down and as we do, we nudge our phone ever so slightly, moving it just one or two centimeters, and that's enough to stop the charging. So wireless power is here. It's in our phones, it's in our cars, and it's in some of our favorite coffee shops. But how practical is it really? Maybe it's not as practical as we first thought it was. At least not for smartphones, not yet. So after my own episode of travel-induced frustration with wires, I set out on a journey to find a better way to deliver power. I founded Solus Power, a company that is focused on tackling the world's power cord problems. And after several years of research and testing, we've developed our own wireless power technology that does not rely on magnetic fields. Instead, it uses electric fields. And we call this technology resonant capacitive coupling, or RC squared. And because we use electric fields with resonant capacitive coupling, we don't have any coils that you need to line up. You don't have to lay your device precisely on a small coaster-sized wireless charger for it to charge. You can now lay your device on a table within several inches and not worry about the alignment. You can also tilt, lift, interact with your device and not worry about losing the wireless charging. But there's one more thing you should know. Solus Power is not focused on your smartphone, at least not yet. We found more far-reaching, diverse applications for our technology, such as helping soldiers to improve their mobility on missions by carrying fewer batteries with them, and helping automotive companies to improve their fuel efficiency and their manufacturing costs and times by lightweighting their vehicles. If we consider a soldier going on a typical 72-hour mission, and they leave their forward operating base, and they ride for six hours in a vehicle before they're dropped off, they dismount from their vehicle, and they continue on foot for 60 hours before being picked up and have another six-hour ride back to their forward operating base. So in this 72-hour mission, a soldier is sitting in a vehicle for 12 hours, and during this time, he has to have all his devices powered on. He can't be tethered in or plugged in to charge those devices, and he can't have any devices off in case of an emergency. He needs to respond and have his devices usable in a moment's notice. So for what is really effectively a 60-hour mission on foot, a soldier has to carry the weight of 72 hours of battery power. So here's how wireless power can help in this scenario. Imagine the same soldier on the same mission sitting in the same vehicle, but now he has wireless power available through the back of his seat, power provided by the vehicle. So his devices are still powered on and they're still using the battery power, but these same batteries are now wirelessly recharging while he's just sitting in his seat. The batteries are being topped up while he's in the vehicle and he doesn't have to carry those extra batteries with him. And for a soldier that's carrying several tens of pounds of battery weight, this can mean more than 10 pounds of weight reduction. 
And this is important because it gives soldiers a choice. They can choose to carry out their mission with a lighter load on their back when they're traveling on foot. Or the soldier can choose to carry other supplies in place of the batteries, such as food and water. And for a critical mission, this can mean the difference between success and failure. It can mean the difference between life and death. So let's take a moment now to imagine how wireless power can impact everyone here. Imagine a wire-free home, your TV, your entertainment devices, your laptops, tablets, smartphones, all completely wireless, your remote controls never needing batteries changed. Move to the kitchen, think of your small countertop appliances. We've all fumbled with at least one of these, moving things around because the cord was just too short to reach the outlet. You'll never need to do this again with wireless power. Traveling, we all know this scenario. Imagine how great it would be to have wireless power in airport lounges and at the departure gate to wirelessly charge all your devices. And imagine arriving in your hotel and having wireless power in your night table, in your desk, in all the counter surfaces in the hotel. You no longer need a travel charger. You no longer need an international adapter when you're far from home. Think of the benefits of light weighting and fuel efficiency for the automotive industry and extend those benefits to airplanes, satellites, and spacecraft. And this is just the beginning. These are just a few of the examples that we can easily visualize today for wireless power. Think of what this means for us in 5, 25, or 50 years from now. We could all have electric cars that recharge wirelessly as we drive down the road. Our communication devices never need to recharge because wireless power is available everywhere, all the time. It's a given. And maybe in this future, your great-grandchildren are visiting you in your older home, and they see an outlet, and they point, and they ask, what's that? <laughs> they don't know because they've never seen one before. They've never used it. For them, wires are a foreign concept, just like data and phone cables are for us today. In this future, wireless power has conquered the tangled mess. Can our future be so liberated? Can it be so bright that we never need to fight with our Christmas lights ever again? Can wireless power truly untangle the wired mess of the present? I believe so. Do you? <laughs>